Thank you, uh, Miss Abby, and good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to First Baptist Church in Ravenswood. I'm Pastor Toby Wagoner with you. It's so good to have you uh, with us today as we have our uh, special streaming service here this morning as we have begun our uh, new COVID-19 safety precautions here at First Baptist Church in Ravenswood. Let me start by just saying I trust you had a beautiful and a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving uh, yesterday, and uh, or over the, actually it was my Thanksgiving dinner yesterday, but I know a lot of you had that, of course, on Thanksgiving Day. But over the last few days, I hope you've been able to gather with your family and friends and enjoy the, uh, the wonderful uh, opportunity that God gave us to not only gather together, but to have beautiful weather uh, for this year's uh, Thanksgiving. And some of you I know, uh, Taylor specifically, has, has just been a deer slayer uh, over the last uh, few days. So uh, he, he was a lucky shot. What else can we say? But anyway, we want to uh, welcome you to our uh, service today, the first Sunday of Advent here at First Baptist Church. And just a few announcements uh, for you this morning. How about these beautiful flowers uh, that you see on the altar? Kevin will get a good shot of these for you today. Uh, these beautiful flowers are given by John and Rose Stevenson in honor of Rose's birthday. So happy birthday uh, to you, Rose. Beautiful uh, flowers today. And uh, we trust that God will be with you today and just uh, enjoy uh, your birthday. There's several other birthdays. Let's all the way, go all the way back uh, to the 25th. We've had a lot of birthdays uh, this week uh, that we want to share with you. And uh, Sue Miller had a birthday, so happy birthday to you, Sue, back on the 25th. Disco Dan Williams had a birthday on the 25th, so if you see Dan out and about, wish him happy birthday. Marie DeLong had a birthday on the 28th. Bob Johnson had a birthday on the 28th. Uh, Rose having a birthday today, I mentioned. Burt Lyons is having a birthday today. I thought he quit counting birthdays, Burt. But uh, he's here today. And uh, also uh, Connor Wyatt is having a birthday today. So we have a ton of uh, birthdays uh, that we want to say happy birthday to uh, each and every one of you. And God bless you on uh, your special day today. Our November memory verse says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name and make known his deeds among the people. Quickly going into our uh, bulletin uh, for today, some activities that we have coming up uh, that you might be interested. I mentioned to you that today is the uh, first Sunday of Advent, which means that we have four Sundays uh, together uh, before uh, Christmas. And we'll be uh, having the lighting of our Advent uh, candle here this morning coming up in just a little bit. I also want to pause and say thank you to uh, Jane and John Moore and uh, Ashley and Connor and Beckett, uh, the Wyant family, uh, for being here with us uh, uh, over the last few days. Look at this sanctuary. Uh, they've just done a, a fantastic job decorating it uh, for the Christmas season. And, you know, you walk in and you just feel blessed seeing all these uh, beautiful uh, flowers, the poinsettias uh, that many of you have uh, sponsored in honor of a loved one. And we'll be talking about that coming up at a future service. But just a, a beautiful job. Thank you, uh, John and Jane and Ashley and Connor and Beckett for uh, uh, helping us out with these beautiful decorations today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, the American Red Cross Blood Drive is coming up on December 7th, and uh, we need your help with that. Now, e if, you have, if you're not a donor, but are willing to come out and help work the uh, volunteer desk, uh, that would be helpful. They have uh, special precautions that they take uh, during the COVID season, and we have usually a full slate of people who donate blood. Now, if you're interested in donating blood, uh, you can call the office here on Monday, and we'll try and find you a, a slot uh, that is available on that uh, December 7th date. Uh, just like Miss Susan know if you'd be willing to come in and help set up or help tear down or help work a station or maybe even hand uh, hand out some of the food that they have that they give the folks who uh, donate uh, blood afterwards. A couple of the other things uh, the deacons have asked that I announced today that they have opened up the uh, offering for uh, annual staff gifts. So if you'd like to make a contribution uh, to the annual staff gift Christmas fund that they collect um, they have set a goal of $1,500 this year. Um, you can uh, earmark your checks if you'd like to do that on the memo for uh, a staff gift. You can write that and uh, they, they will put that in the appropriate account. Also, you can give online uh, to that. You can give through Tithely. So if you are an online giver, uh, you're welcome to go online. And one of the options that you'll have in addition uh, to your standard offering would be to give as far as the uh, staff gift is concerned. We mentioned to you that today we are streaming only. The, the only folks in the uh, building today with us uh, would be the ministry 
ministry team, uh, Susan with the technical support there in the back, and our uh, family who will be here lighting the Advent candle. Uh, the deacons and I made the decision that today, with, with having the holidays and gathering and Black Friday shopping that a lot of us would do, that it would be best for us today just to, to stream only in our service. Normally we have about 35 or 38, about 25 percent of our congregation uh, is in attendance. Everybody else is watching the service. So what we're going to do beginning next weekend is we're going to start monitoring the Department of Education map through the winter months. Uh, if any time the, uh, the Department of Education shows an orange or red county map for Jackson County, uh, it comes out on Saturday night. So uh, next week we'll be watching that map on Saturday evening. If it's orange or red, we will only have a streaming uh, broadcast available like we have today, either on Zoom or those of you who are watching. If it's any other caller, we'll be here gathering in person. Uh, we'll put that out as soon as we get that decision. They usually have that up between five and nine o'clock in the evening on Saturday night. We'll always put out the all call till everybody gets comfortable with the system for a while so that uh, like the phone call you got today reminding our church family uh, that we would not be having in-person service today and that we are streaming. So uh, that's why we're doing the service uh, that we're doing today. So if you would and you're watching, hit share and invite others to uh, join you on the broadcast today. And a couple of other uh, quick notes that we want to point out. The beautiful poinsettias again, uh, sponsored by uh, church families in honor or in memory of someone today. And we're also now collecting for the luminaries that will be lit on Christmas Eve that are uh, around the church on the outside on the sidewalks. Last year, we had a couple of hundred of those uh, that we had lit and completely lined the block of the church, uh, the, 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 three, uh, the two sides of the church, the front and uh, the uh, and Mulberry Street. So we had both of those sides uh, covered and uh, it was absolutely gorgeous. So we want to be able to do that again for you uh, for Christmas Eve. So um, we have the list that you used last year. So if you want to continue with that, just let Miss Susan know here at the church and she will be glad to help you out. So a lot of things going on. Remember when we're not having church, they're not having youth and is scheduled for next Sunday uh, to have youth. Um, so she'll be in contact with you, reaching out to you soon about that. So with all that said, those are the announcements we have. I'm going to pause and uh, bring our family for the Lions family who are here today to uh, begin our Advent candle lighting service. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. First scripture is going to be Psalms 103, 8 through 12. Bless the Lord is merciful and graceful, gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Isaiah 9, 1 through 7. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, as when it at first he lightly esteemed. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward, more heavily oppressed her. By way of the sea beyond the Jordan, in Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice you before you, according to the joy of harvest. As, man, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil, for you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his presser as in the day of Medan. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle 
and the garments rolled in blood will be used for burning of fuel and fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting, Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and, the, and over his kingdom, to, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This day we light the candle of forgiveness. Too often, unforgiveness makes us feel that we're alone and in a dark place. We've been wronged. People have done mean things and said things that have cut us like a knife. We wear our anger and hurt like a suit of armor where no light, no help, no healing can get through. After each statement, please respond with, we will forgive. <clears throat> Those who have said things behind our backs, we, we will, will forgive. forgive. Those who hurt us yesterday, we, we, will, we will forgive. forgive. Those who hurt us as children, we, we will, will forgive. forgive. Those who will hurt us tomorrow, we, we will, will forgive. forgive. That woman in the SUV who took the last parking spot, we, we will, will forgive. forgive. That man who cut in front of us in the grocery store line, we will forgive. The sister who never has anything nice to say about, our spou about your spouse, we will forgive. The mother who can always find dirt no matter how hard we clean, we will forgive. The one who broke our heart, we will forgive. Our children when they really mess up, we will forgive. Our parents, when they really mess up, we will forgive. The kid who can never get an or get our order right at the drive-thru, we, we will forgive. forgive. The doctor who missed the diagnosis, we, we will, will forgive. forgive. My loved one for dying, we, we will forgive. forgive. Myself for being mad at it, we, we will forgive. forgive. Our own actions, our own faults, our own inadequacies, we, we will, will forgive. forgive. Forgiveness is not easy. We will forgive. In this session of new life, how can we ask God for unconditional love if we are unwilling to offer it? God gives us his love freely and hopes that we will share it. God's word tells us that tells us he's wiped our slate clean out of great goodness of his heart. In turn, let us consider those who've hurt us and extend God's grace by saying, we will forgive. Let's bow our heads for a prayer. Let us pray. Lord, as we transfer us through these times of darkness, remind us that you are the light and the hope. That through you, all things are possible. May the darkness be bright again. In your name, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, uh, Bert. Thank you, Philip. And uh, thank you, uh, Deb. Beautiful job on our uh, first week of Advent here this morning, lighting our candles, setting the scene that Jesus is coming. Let's go over to Miss Abby and Ann for a hymn this morning. You know this song. This is called Joy to the World. Hey. 
heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace, and beats the nations through. And wonders, wonders of his love. Thank you, uh, Miss Happy. Thank you, Anne. Beautiful job, as always. Folks at home, let's uh, go to uh, the Lord in prayer as we look at our uh, prayer bulletin, some names. Uh, we do have uh, several updates and additions uh, to add uh, this week than what we had last week. First, we want to uh, just remember the family of Norma Llewellyn. Uh, that is uh, Pastor Mark's mother. Uh, she went home to be with the Lord uh, this past week, and we just want to continue to pray for Mark and Susan and Holly, uh, the, the whole family. Uh, we want them to know how much we love them and uh, cherish them and appreciate them. And, uh, and of course, uh, New Llewellyn was, uh, Norma was such a, uh, a, a Christian by faith and, and had been on this earth 90 plus years, I believe 97. So it's hard to believe, but uh, just an amazing life. And uh, she's been so involved. So, so God bless her and, and her family. And, and let's remember uh, Mark and, and his family as, uh, as they grieve the loss of his mother. Uh, we also had another family member to lose a loved one this past week, Helen Frank. Uh, her brother, uh, William Kogar, went on to be with the Lord. So uh, be in prayer uh, for Helen Frank, uh, Donna, Tara, and the whole family. Um, again, William Kogar, he passed this past week. So we want to um, I want to lift the family up in prayer. The family did ask me to go visit him uh, the past week. He was in intensive care, and we were able to arrange that uh, visit. And uh, we thank the Lord uh, for that opportunity. We continue uh, to remember uh, the other families in our church of lost loved ones, uh, family of Gloria Easter, the family of Mike Sharp, uh, the f family of uh, Carolyn Campbell, and family of Jim Porter, and family of Roberta Duncan. Uh, again, all those uh, those families on our list that have lost loved ones here in the past couple of weeks. A um, couple of additions to our uh, prayer concerns. Continue to pray for J.J. Mahan and Jim Mahan. We ask you to continue to lift them up in your prayers. They've been battling some illness. Uh, Catherine uh, Berjoyce, uh, that was another name that was mentioned for us to uh, bring up today. So uh, please continue to pray uh, for Miss Catherine. Remember uh, to pray for the families. Uh, many of you may have families who are traveling uh, back to where they came from today to visit you or to spend time with you. Maybe you're going to be on the road later today. We just ask for God's traveling mercies uh, for you and your family while you're out and about. Uh, we pray for our school system. We pray for our military men and women who are serving the country and maybe away from uh, their families today. And most of all, we remember the loss. Let us use this wonderful season of Advent, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the birth of our Savior and soon coming return of the Messiah. Uh, we, we want to just remember this is a grand time to share the good news of Christ uh, with those in our families, those in our friend circle or in our uh, co-worker, a co-worker that we may have that may be uh, searching. It's an opportunity for us to uh, try and insert the discussion about how good God is to us and how much he loves us. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we lift up these concerns. And, and I'm sure you may have an unspoken request or something on your heart at home today. I'm going to just ask God to hear your prayer as well this morning. Would you join me as we go to prayer? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings of life. And Lord, here we are on this beautiful Sunday morning, Lord, uh, looking at the church, just so beautifully decorated, reminding us, God, of, of, of the birth of your son, Jesus. Lord, we're so grateful that you were willing to send him into uh, such a sin-filled world, God, with, with the goal of saving mankind, redeeming us, put us back into an eternal relationship with you. And Father, we're so grateful for that. And, and Lord, we couldn't imagine, uh, Father, trying to go through this world without him in our heart. 
And Father, we just thank you uh, for sending us Jesus. And Lord, for the for today and the weeks to come, help us focus on his arrival. It's been a, a difficult year for many families. We've had family members in our church who've lost loved ones due to this uh, dreadful disease. And fathers, others who feel just isolated, uh, being separated uh, from society and the things that they want to do. God, we pray that as we move forward in this service, that they can just set those things aside and hear what the Spirit is trying to tell us, Lord, as we learn in the service today how to wait on you, wait on your movement, and Lord, uh, wait on the good things that you have in store for us. Be with the families that we've mentioned today who've lost loved ones. God, those who may be dealing with illness, uh, sickness, or decisions that need to be made about their well-being. God, for other family problems that could be occurring, Lord, we pray that something that we've all done this past week, uh, Lord, with families and our Thanksgiving dinners, our phone conversations, that we've been able to just be an encouragement to others to see that we have uh, true life and true hope uh, that's found in you. Help us remember that as we move forward today. I thank you, God, for our ministry team uh, willing to come out today and uh, work. Kevin behind the camera and Abby and Ann for their music. Susan here to troubleshoot any technical difficulties we have. And Father, we thank you for the Lions family uh, for coming in today to be a part of our Advent service. Father, this, this special uh, remembrance of uh, you sending us Jesus. God, be blessed, be exalted. And uh, Lord, we lift you up this morning in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go on to our uh, sermon. So we're going to go ahead and move into the message today. And uh, then we'll come back uh, with a hymn at the end. Today I'd like to go into uh, the book of Romans. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. As we look at the message today, waiting on God. And, and I'm so uh, grateful uh, for uh, Philip's uh, reading today. And, you know, again, we look at how, um, at, at how things just fit together. And, you know, and, and it was interesting how he went through this litany of things of, of how we are to forgive in moments in our lives where we are to forgive. And if I was to tell you that when we look at this one verse of scripture, how in the world does this have to do with anything in Advent? Here's the scripture. It's Romans 3.23. I'll read from the New King James uh, Version today. This is the scripture that you are very much familiar with if you've been around church at all. And, here, and here's the, the scripture. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, or fallen short, we might say. And of course, the other, the other translations may remind us that we just don't add up. We don't measure up because of the sin that we have in our life. May God have blessing to the reading of his words. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, uh, first, let's talk a little bit about Advent. I found some background information on Advent, and I wanted to share this knowing that we would be streaming today in and some of you watching may not be that familiar with what Advent is. Maybe you've never grown up where your church has actually celebrated Advent with the lighting of candles and, and special readings involved. Some families uh, celebrate Advent on their own around their kitchen table each week counting down uh, to Christmas. Others will celebrate in their church and others simply won't have an Advent service per se, but they're still anticipating. Christmas. It's the beginning of the season. Uh, the, the word Advent is not found in the Bible. So uh, don't look for it. Don't Google it. It's not there. It's a Latin word, Adventos. And boy, that's, I don't know if that's right or not. I'll have to ask Aaron. He's taking some Latin. I hope that's somewhat right. But anyway, it's uh, translated from the Greek word uh, Perusia. Okay? I think I did good on that one. You all should give me a round. You should give me a thumbs up on that. Perusia. Kevin's giving me one a uh, parousia let's say it together parousia uh, that's the greek word which means coming and that's what advent is all about it's about celebrating the coming of our lord and savior jesus christ as a as a baby who came born of a virgin in a manger but then we, we don't wait for his coming again as a baby we wait for his coming as lord of lord and king of kings in the second coming so we, we are in a moment of advent year round, if you think about it, about waiting for this coming of the Lord. 
So when we talk about where did Advent come from, it actually came about in 380 AD, so about 380 years after uh, the death and burial and resurrection of Christ uh, with, with the uh, Council of Saragossa, did, the, did they create the word Advent? And what it did was it was set aside to solidify the Christian belief that God became flesh in the form of Jesus and he lived upon or among men. So I think that's very important that we understand where the background of Advent uh, comes from. Uh, the celebration and worship uh, actually took part in the 8th and 9th century. Uh, the word Advent, as I mentioned, isn't found in Scripture. It's celebrated four Sundays uh, before Christmas. So each of the four candles uh, that you'll see on the outside are lit each week. And then the center candle, which is the Christ candle, is lit on Christmas Eve. And we're working on a special Christmas Eve service where that center candle will be lit. And that's how that service will begin. So how do we get into the point of waiting on God? How do we wait on God if we know he is coming? We know the world when it began was in need of a savior after the fall in the garden. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God used Abraham. You'll remember that God used Abraham right up through Moses uh, to set forth a plan to renew his relationship with man. And you talk about a period of hundreds and hundreds of years uh, where this transpired. And think about the death of Jesus. You know, uh, here it is over 2,000 uh, years ago. Um, so, and we're still waiting on the coming of the Messiah. Now, Philip went through a whole bunch of, of things in his Advent reading where he was talking about we need to forgive. But, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that he read read there that I struggle with. Do you struggle with that list? I mean, we read we forgive, but will we forgive? That's more uh, uh, in line with the question that we should be asking. Uh, there was a, an article that talked about things that people hate to wait on. And, and here are some of those. Let's talk about waiting on God. What are some of the things today that we don't like waiting on? How about waiting in line at the bank? Does that drive you nuts when you're at the drive through or you're inside, you're in line, and you're like, like, come on, get it together already. Count the money, make the deposit, whatever it needs to happen. We, we get so stressed out waiting at the bank, uh, but we don't. We don't sit there and say, Lord, thank you for giving me money to come to the bank, or thank you for allowing me to have money uh, to be in line uh, to do this banking that I need to do. Uh, we get so wrapped up in the waiting as a negative, we miss the blessing. How about at the toll booth? I read this one online, and this is a good one. You know, you, you're there, and, and the car in front of you at the toll booth is either digging for change or something because they've had two miles to get their money together, they get to the toll booth and they sit there. What are they doing? Maybe they were having, a, maybe they were thanking the toll booth for being so friendly or welcoming, or maybe asking for directions or where the nearest restroom is. We don't know. But if we're the car behind them, we miss the blessing of the fact that we're able to drive and able uh, to uh, get where we need to go and that we have means to do that. We get wrapped up in the moment and miss the blessing. Couple of others. How about about the doctor's office? Do you like waiting at the doctor's office? Maybe you've had an appointment set for a long time. You get there early and you still don't get in. How does that make you feel when you're waiting on the doctor? Or are you there thinking, well, Lord, allow him to, I, I thank you for a doctor who spends time with his patients. I thank you for a doctor who is not in a rush or who may be working on a serious case, much more serious than mine. Do we do that? Often not. We, we Because we are wrapped up in the moment and we want to be served right then. Uh, how about the checkout line at the store? Uh, how many of you, that, how many of you, does that wear you out? Uh, with the waiting online at the checkout with your groceries or your goodies, even for uh, Christmas. You know, waiting in line can steal your joy if we allow it to. Because we start thinking about what we should be doing or what the cashier is not doing or, or how slow the person's putting up their items at the checkout. A couple of other things. How about, the, uh, how about waiting on your cable man or an electric repair or a phone repair? And you have that 10 hour window of, of when they might arrive. H how does that make you feel while you're waiting? You don't know when they're coming, you anticipate it. 
You've tracked your package through FedEx or UPS, and it's supposed to be there, but it's not there. So you're continuing to watch because you know you've got to sign for it. And you have to be there. What With anticipation, you wait, but the frustration creeps in. Even so much that even when the package comes, you're not as excited as you were earlier on in the day. And we could go on and on and on about things that we wait for. Waiting in line for the restroom. Waiting in line for your fast food. Waiting in line in general for, for registration. For those of you in college, you might be waiting for the classes to open. And those kinds of things. We spend a lot of time in our lives waiting. And most of the time, if we're honest, if you and I are really honest, we don't like to wait. We don't like to wait. We want it now in our way, and, and we just want to be able to do it and move on. But sometimes there is a lesson in waiting. Sometimes God may be preparing on the other end just what we knew that requires us to wait a little bit, to, to hold off the gas pedal just a little bit. Road rage. A good friend of ours here in the church, Shailen, was sharing about her road rage difficulty. I told her I don't really have road rage only when people don't drive the way they should. You know, we, we, we kind of gave her that. So what I want you to see, and again, setting the scene for the message today, is we are waiting a lot. And how we wait matters. So if you and I are waiting on God, can we trust that he loves us? Can we trust that he has a plan? And can we trust that he knows what's better for us before we even ask? That's waiting on God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So even from Abraham through Moses through the temple sacrificial system and whatnot we were waiting a better way a new covenant that would come people were waiting for that Messiah to alleviate the persecution that was going on there was there was constant waiting in the days of Noah it got so bad that God destroyed the world and only saved one family that he would repopulate the earth through when and how could god move in a situation like that no doubt that well people thought noah was crazy building the ark it's never rained what do you mean a flood trying to describe what may transpire god got to the point where he actually repented that he even made man during that time why because all had sinned and come up short of his glory that we were born into sin nothing that we purposely did but it was passed on through us and will be passed on from generation to generation as long as god tarries and we know that from the from the garden where sin creeped in life became hard you had to till the ground not everything that you planted would grow there would be weeds and thistles evil became present and there was spiritual war that was underway on earth a battle for souls a battle for the loved one that you and i have who haven't acknowledged jesus christ of their savior god sent his blessing upon man in the beginning and man blew it we blew it in the garden of eden simple task simple responsibility just to commune with god and take care of all that he had given and we were subject to temptation and we failed sin became present sin has been ever present ever since but mankind from that fall has been waiting on god waiting on god to to send us a redeemer waiting on god to send us a way to find forgiveness that the lions family spoke about so eloquently this morning waiting for the Lord to, to help us find this final forgiveness that would put us on a path to being uh, back into a good relationship with Jesus Christ. As man would tarry on this earth and as he tarries today, sin continues to grow worse and worse. Even God's servants, we read in the book of Malachi, were no longer working for God. They were picking and choosing which laws to follow. They were tainting their own offering. But still, mankind was waiting on God. When would the Messiah come? Why would he come to a world that's so wicked? When would the Savior come into the, the world? When would obedience become better 
than sacrifice. See, question after question, as we head in to the season of Advent, that coming of the Lord, we wait. Mankind was waiting on the coming of the Lord, waiting for this end all sacrifice for mankind's sins, waiting on God. When it appeared through the silent years between the Old Testament and New Testament, where it was about 400 years, that's kind of what we call the, the silent part of the Bible, the silent years. God was still existing, but his word was silent. The Bible's silent on those years. What would that mean for mankind? He was preparing the way for Jesus. Thank God that there came a time when God's plan for mankind's redemption would be enacted. It was the time that would become the end all sacrifice for mankind. But to be a sacrifice for sins in, in the society that existed, in the priestly world that existed at that time, the sacrifice would have to be perfect, blameless, spotless, pure, in all sense of the word. See, in their sacrificial system, which only lasted for a year at a time, you would bring your best, the best of the flock that you had, and it would be inspected to see if it was defective. Because why would you want to sacrifice the best animal that you have? Why would you want to do that? Your, your prized possession. Why would you want to sacrifice the best you had? Because we know second best was not good enough for God. It never has been, and it never will be. God desires our best. So these sacrifices, these animals that would be sacrificed, they would be inspected. And if there was something found to be wrong with them, you had to purchase an animal that was perfect and that could uh, suffice for your sacrifice. That was the system that existed. So how would God change that system or bring about a better system or a new system to us if the sacrifice he expected had to be perfect? And if mankind is already sinful because we live in a society of sin, we were born in sin, and that sin curse has continued on from generation to generation. Listen, you can be the best person in your family, the best person at your job, the best person in your neighborhood. You can be the who's who. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you're as dirty as the dirtiest among us in God's eyes. And see, what happens is we analyze ourselves and we say, well, I'm not that bad. And that righteousness that we give ourselves is like filthy rags in the eyes of God. So we have to know our place, knowing that I can only stand before you and bring you this message, not because of anything I can do, or, or not because of any talent I have, but because I'm saved. That Jesus has forgiven me of my sin. How can the preacher be a sinner? How can your, how can your deacons be sinners? How can, your, how can Abby be a sinner on the piano? How is that possible? Because we're all born in sin. And it's through the grace of God that we've been forgiven. And God sees us as clean. So how would this system work? Again, we're waiting on God to give us the answer to be the end all sacrifice of sin. What would it take? So God chooses the angel Gabriel and sends him to the hood. He sends him to the neighborhood of Nazareth. The Bible talks about nothing good comes out of Nazareth. And in this community, there was this young girl, probably 12 or 13 years of age, just old enough to be childbearing. And God chooses this woman, whose name is Mary, out of all of his creation. Didn't have to be in Nazareth. It could have been in Jerusalem, the big city. It could have been in Rome. It could have been in, in Macedonia. It could have been anywhere. But he chose Nazareth and this one young woman named Mary. The Bible tells us that Mary was a virgin who was waiting for marriage. 
that she was engaged or espoused to Joseph. She had kept herself pure. She was waiting for a husband. Waiting for God to send her the husband. And she had made this, this commitment, this betrothal, which is, is stronger than the engagement you and I have today. Because we can walk away from an engagement, but you don't walk away from a betrothal. That would require legal action. In fact, you could be killed for violating that betrothal. See, a very serious, a very serious commitment that her and Joseph had made to each other, and they were waiting for just the right time to be married. No doubt longing for children someday. No doubt longing for the big house on the hill with the pool and jacuzzi. No doubt wanting all the good things that life had. So they were waiting. But Gabriel goes to her, and he finds her, and he approaches her, and he tells her to fear not. And he tells her that, that she will become the mother of the Son of God, who would be the, the sinless sacrifice to save mankind in their sin. And what did Mary say? How can this be? I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man intimately like that. And they remind Mary that what is impossible with man is possible with God. And so Mary, Mary wonders about it. And she gives the head nod of, okay, I'll do it. And the Holy Spirit comes behind, but, uh, upon her, and, and baby Jesus is placed in her belly. And she, she goes to find her in-law, Elizabeth. No doubt, probably her aunt goes to find her because she's been told that she's carrying a baby. How could this be? Because she's old. She doesn't have any kids. They don't have kids. And they send her for that confirmation that Elizabeth would be carrying John the Baptist. And when the two women meet, the baby leaps in the womb because John would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. All part of God's plan that you and I have been waiting for to make way for the Messiah. This baby who would grow amongst people in Nazareth, be raised there, no doubt in the trades of a carpenter of his father, learning in church, the synagogue. But then once he reaches about the age of 12, he began to teach in the synagogue, not as one who'd been taught or who was learned, but one as who was having authority. And he mesmerized people. God's plan was coming to fruition. The this Messiah that we had been waiting upon was here. But in that very moment for Mary, going back into the wilderness, going back into that quiet moment, while she was waiting for all the big things in her life, God had a plan for her life. What is God doing in your life as you wait? As you're at home and, and deciding whether or not I, I, I can be a Christian or, or I should be a Christian or maybe I should get saved. What are you waiting for? We're waiting on God to move. God has moved. God is moving. God is saving people. And God put into place the plan of salvation. Because all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. For many of us in real time, the circumstances, our family issues, our jobs, things going in in our lives and out in our lives, it might make sense on the surface. Maybe sometimes it doesn't make sense on the surface. But we're waiting on God to lead and guide. We're waiting on God to give us the answer that we've been praying for. We're waiting on God to provide the blessing that we so need. We do a lot of waiting in this life. And how we wait can change your countenance. 
How we wait can change your personality. How we, how we wait can change your whole demeanor. You may not be liked because you don't wait well. Can we be a better waiter? Can we be more patient? Can we be more kind? Can we be more loving? Should we? Can we? Haven't we waited long enough to surrender our life over to Christ? To say, Jesus, I can't do it on my own. I've tried. I fail every time. And I might fail you, God. But you know, God is, is ready, willing, and able to go with us in this journey we call life. He wants to see us be the best that we can be. Because we represent him. We are, as we say many times, almost every week, we are the only Bible that some people will ever read. And if that's the case, then we better be a good book. We better be a book that shines light and shows forth people toward Jesus. When things don't make sense to us, that's when we've got to wait on the Lord. When things really is blowing your mind, what's happening, then you need to wait on God a little longer. The Bible tells us to lean not on our own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him, trust him. Why? Because he knows everything. Taking a test easy if you've got the answer key, right? Waiting on God doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a good thing. Joseph, when he found out from Mary that she was with child, he had to wait and make a decision that could have changed all humanity. Think about the decision he had to make. He could have immediately had her put to death and said, the child she has is not mine. Kill her. She cheated on me. Adulterer. Made an example of her. He could have done that. But he slept on it. He waited. He waited. Was thinking about what his options were. And none of them were good. But he slept on it. And God gave him the answer that he needed. And that was... The child that she was carrying was God's child, not another man's. That child would be holy. That child, because he wasn't placed in Mary's belly in the traditional pregnancy sense, right? He wasn't conceived through intercourse. He wasn't. He was placed there. That's how Jesus avoided being born in sin, see? So you say, well, I don't understand that, brother. I, I, I can't do the virgin thing. I just can't. Listen, you got to set aside a little bit of what you think is the way things have to be, to understand that Jesus had to come through the virgin to be sinless, to be perfect, to be that end-all sacrifice. And that's why in his life, he was tempted in every way that you and I are, but yet he did not sin, because had he sinned, he would have just been like us. But he wasn't. He was the perfect Lamb of God, whose sole purpose was to point people to God and to save them. He did not come. See, the world misses this part. He did not come to condemn the world. He came to save it. He already knew we were messed up. We just don't know that we're messed up, but God already knows we're messed up. But he gave us the end all sacrifice. Aren't you glad that God has loved us so much that even while we were still in sin, he gave us Jesus? Not just for the Jewish people, not to just any certain group or organization. He gave mankind Jesus so that whoever will call upon his name will be saved. And that started at Christmas with his birth. I like to believe it started with that miraculous baby being placed in the belly of Mary. Joseph listened to what God said. Joseph honored Mary and never touched her sexually until that child was born. That's love. God demonstrated his love because we had to wait until just the right moment for God to give us the greatest gift. And as you and I are in this season of Advent, week one is about waiting. 
And as you heard this morning, it's about forgiveness. And thank God, Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven. And that plan started with Mary and Joseph and a little baby they didn't even get to name. Imagine that. They didn't even get to pick his name. Her first child. No books. No Googling popular baby names. The angel said, you're going to name him Jesus. Think it was bad for her? Same thing with Zachariah and Elizabeth. They didn't get to name their kids either. Why? Because God wanted him named John. There's nobody in the family named John. Why'd you pick that name? The angel said, you're going to name him John. Friends, you and I are in a great position in life, believe it or not. We're living in difficult and challenging times. There's no question. The end of the, the earth, as we know it, could be at any time. Do you believe that Jesus is closer coming back today than he's ever been before? At what point is God just going to look over at Jesus and say, go get him. I've seen enough. We've got to be ready to go. We've got friends and family who are waiting, just waiting to give their heart to Jesus. How long will they wait? How long do they have? Can they make the decision? How is God using you? Maybe you've waited long enough and haven't had this conversation with them. You can do it. I can do it. We're commanded to do it. The, the Great Commission was for all of us. Take the world to the lost. Point them toward Jesus. Because it's okay to wait on Christ moving. Be in prayer for those family members. Be in prayer for those co-workers. Be in prayer for those friends who need to turn their life over to Jesus. Because as you wait, God's moving. God's working. And he's made a path to restore them with him in relationship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message today. And God, as we enter this first week of Advent, we, we think of waiting and we think of the forgiveness that you've given us because we, we've all sinned and come short of your glory. And Father, it's through salvation that we're, we're, we look new, we're justified. We can stand holy in front of you. And God, we're not perfect. It's the process of sanctification that we go through. Lord, that once we've given our heart to you, that the Holy Spirit begins to shape and mold us. The things we used to do, we don't do anymore. See, we get it backwards, God. We think we've got to be clean to come to you. In fact, when we give our heart to you, you make us clean and sanctify us through the Holy Spirit, changing our ways, our habits, our wants, our desires. And you make us more like you. And Father, we know that one day, while we wait day by day by day by day for your second coming, God, we have to be patient because there's people who need to give their lives to you. And every day you wait we, is truly a gift from God. Every day that you wait from taking your church out of here is a gift from God that we, we ignore because you're long-suffering. You're not lazy. You're not slackful. You're giving us the chance to do our part, to witness to others, to see them saved before it's too late. Help us, Father, see that, that your waiting, and sometimes our waiting, is a good thing. Because without that, we may make wrong decisions, rash decisions, and decisions that make our life way more complicated than you ever intended. Help us see that there's something good can come out of waiting. And Advent, week one, Father, shows us that waiting for your birth was good for mankind. Lord, I pray if there's one watching today, only one, if there's one, we can cause great excitement in heaven this morning. The Bible talks about there's great rejoicing in heaven over one person who repents. And Father, I pray if, if that person's watching today, just one, who says, I know if I die today, I'm not going to make it to heaven. I'm going to miss my family. I'm going to miss my friends. I like to say eternity is way too long for us to be wrong. Help us, Father. Turn to you 
Help us ask you to forgive us of our sins. Come into our heart. Save us. And then believe in our heart that you were raised from the dead. Lord, if we believe that, we can be saved. And we can enjoy the promises and the gifts that you've given us that the word promises us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to reflect wherever you're sitting as Abby and Ann sing this beautiful song this morning. God bless you. Thank you, Miss Ann. Thank you, Abby. Beautiful job, as always. want to thank uh, Kevin uh, working hard for us back there on the uh, camera today. Thank you, Kev, for being here. And thank Miss Susan West being back in her office doing our troubleshooting for us today. I want to thank our uh, ministry team for being able to be here again. Thank the Lions family uh, for being here today to participate on our, uh, in our Advent services. And as we move forward, whether or not we have a, a service that's streamed or in person, those who are, have the Advent responsibilities will be here in those services. So next Saturday night, uh, check Check the uh, Department of Education website. Just Google Department of Ed caller map. It'll come up there. It'll give you the date. Uh, Saturday night, we'll check the caller. If it's orange or red, we will have streaming service next week only by streaming. If it's any other caller than those two, we will be back here in the uh, sanctuary. We'll be taking it a week at a time as we head through uh, these winter months. Thank you uh, for being with us today. Uh, I trust that you've been blessed. Hey, we are in the beginning of the Christmas season. So put on a smile. Get your Christmas cards out, get them filled out, and know that Jesus is still in control and he loves you very much. Until we meet again, God bless you, and we'll see you next Sunday.